Hey, Ma. Hey, Cliff. Just call and say Happy Mother's Day. Uh, thank you, Cliff. Okay. Really appreciate that. All right. Catch you at a bad time? No, not really. Well, what's going on? I'm at work. Okay. Cold and raining. I was just thinking about maybe some probably is cooking dinner. Probably maybe step by there and give me some dinner. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll take my foot off. I'm going to tell her I say Happy Mother's Day. Uh, you don't have a number? I ain't calling everybody. I'm making videos. Say hi to YouTube, Ma. Okay. <laughs> Well, everything there is good. You can go ahead and say the hi, hi to them now. They're actually listening right now. Oh, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Hey, y'all. Coach in the Fight here with a very, very special Mother's Day show right today is mother's day i happened to go to church and found my way in in the middle of a old-fashioned traditional mother's day type church environment and i got a bright idea i said i would come home and talk to everybody about what the third testament says about mothers and such so <clears throat> if you're new to our channel i say welcome uh, over here at hermes academy we teach all scripture, starting with the King James Version of the Bible, but also moving into um, other books like the Lost Books of the Bible, the Apocrypha, the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, pretty much any and all holy scripture that we can find. We really only teach from the scripture, um, but we teach all of the scripture. So look around our channel, subscribe to our channel, um, but you know we do have classes on more traditional texts if you uh, want to get some of you know uh, our background you can look at some of our um, um, King James stuff and uh, see that we do have a solid foundation but this one we're going to be talking about some other books in particular uh, the third testament of the Bible the third testament of the Bible not at, not all of you guys are familiar with the third testament of the Bible you can get a copy of the Third Testament of the Bible over here at uh, Jesus-Comes.com. Uh, they have a PDF version that you can download to your computer uh, for free um, as of today. So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. In particular, we're going to talk about a section out of chapter 33. 33 of the, uh, of the Third Testament is entitled Men and Women parents and children, family and marriage, and it talks about just that. It talks about, you know, um, men and their responsibilities. It talks about women and their responsibilities, which is what we're going to talk about to, uh, here in a few minutes. But I also go in and talk about parenting and children. It tells us, you know, some of the problems that we're having with our children and what the solution will be. It talks about family and marriage. This is a, a great chapter. You can see that the contents there of that chapter. But we're only going to look at part three. And we're going to look um, more in chapter 20, right? We're going to, um, um, starting with the example of Mary for women, that's going to be part four of chapter 20, which the title of chapter 20 is Mary, the, mat the maternal love of God. And we're, we're going to, you're, it's going to be interesting what you, what we'll find there. Um, and then the last thing we'll look at um, will be a little verse out of chapter 62, verse 42. And that's going to wrap us up for today. So I'm going to get set up a little bit and we'll jump right into it. Alrighty, we're up here in chapter 33 of the Third Testament of the Bible. This section we're in is called Woman, Wife, and Mother. We're going to start at verse 37, which says, Women, it is you who with your prayer protect what little peace there is in the world, and who 
as faithful guardians of the home take care that it does not lack the warmth of love in this way you unite Mary to break human arrogance this is a, res a very important responsibility guys you, you could actually make a card out of this if you wanted to create a card that is you know unique and you take this verse right here and and put it you know to make a Mother's Day card it would be real mushy and stuff but let's look at what it says here he says it is you with your prayer protect what little peace there is in the world yeah we we learn in the third testament that it is it is pretty much the women who are doing all of the praying for all of the world it's like if it were not for the women praying if it were left up to the prayers that are being put up by the men alone the world will be gone by now. You know, we, we, we learned this all over the book that it's our women that are praying for us. And so we appreciate our mothers, um, wives and sisters for doing so. Let's go on. It says, and who as faithful guardians of the home take care to do that it does not lack warmth. Yeah. You know, this that's that's important, guys. You know, I, I live in a house with a lot of men, you know, um, my wife and I have one daughter there and the rest of us are, are guys. And, you know, without the mother in the home, the warmth kind of goes away. It really gets cold. You know, sometimes, you know, I find myself and it's just me and my boys there. And, you know, you, you notice the lack of warmth whenever the mother is not in the house, you know. But I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit. All right. Um, we're going to come back to that part where it says in this way you unite with Mary. OK, we're going to come back to that part. All right. Look at verse 33. He says you women who water the rose of this world with your tears and who with your blood mark your passage through this life. Rest in me to recover new strength and to continue being the bearers of love, the fire of the hearth. And the solid foundation of the home that I have entrusted to you on earth. So that you may continue being like a mother bird spreading her wings to protect her husband and children. I bless you. I'm talking about the mothers here. Now one thing that's real interesting, you know, that you know jumps out. It says they protects the, the husband and the children, you know. And, you know, talking about, and that's. You know, that kind of gives us, you know, or puts me in the mind of a wife. And, you know, she is a motherly figure to the children, but she's just doing just like that, spreading her motherly wings to protect her husband as well as her children. But that's the mother in her, and we should appreciate her for that. I know I do my wife, even though I may not show it all the time. All right, let's go on. <clears throat> 39. I exalt the man and the place of the woman at the at his right I exalt the man and the place of the woman at his right I sanctify marriage and bless the family all right now he's talking about the man now in the previous section of this chapter 33 was all about the man just like this one is about the woman you know um, maybe when Father's Day come around next year we'll have a similar show dealing with that we have you'll include the uh, previous section but this one is about the woman Let's go look at verse 4. It says, In this era I come with a sword of love to put all things in their places, for men had put them elsewhere. Right? We've, we've changed the priorities. Right? And, and we think one thing is important when actually in the Father's eyes, you know, a whole other thing is, is, is important. But he says right there, um, he says, uh, In this era I come with a sword of love to put all things in their in their places this is that's that's a hint of, of the tribulation and like I said we teach a lot of scriptural classes you know um, we just did a uh, playlist on uh, what's going to come in the end times that's coming out of chapter 55 chapter 55 talks about the earthquakes earthquakes and plagues it blessed basically just an expansion on revelations it gives a, a lot more detail um, in modern day language and such but all right look look around the channel to find that kind of stuff all right let's look at 41 he says truly I tell you that the regeneration of humanity must begin with the woman so that their fruit which are the men of tomorrow 
are found free of the stains that have led them to degeneration. This generation of humanity, not the one we're currently in, you know, this one, this generation that we're in is is actually ending, you know. We're talking about the one that's starting after the tribulation when he says this this generation of humanity must begin with the women. So he's talking future tense here. He's talking future tense here or present tense because it's, it's, it's really will start with our beginning with our women, you know, here today. And I'm just saying we're not this 19. This ain't 1971 that he's talking about. Here's what, what I'm alluding to. He says, um, so it is their fruit talking about the babies that they will have, which are the men of tomorrow. So these guys are going to grow up in their house are found free of the stains that have led them to degeneration okay now what he's talking about is it is the parents of today or the parents of tomorrow who have been gone through the purification process which we call the tribulation and who now stand in the right place or the righteous place that the most high or the father would have us to be will then raise children without the stains of mistruths, uh, fallacies, and uh, church doctrine, and, you know, a pure carnal desire to do wicked stuff. It is then when these future mothers or present mothers, you know, some of them are on the path already, um, when they raise these children, these children will be found free of the stains that have led to the generation. And I know I messed that up, but let's go on. Then it will correspond to men to do their part in this work of reconstruction. For all who have corrupted a woman must regenerate her. Okay. Now notice the before and the after here is once our mothers um, start um, um Raising our and, and and that burden is not on them, and I hate the way I have to say this, but once our mothers um 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 find themselves in a purified uh, environment, raising righteous kids, it is their righteous kids who are going to start the reconstruction process. You know, we we understand you know that we go through the tribulation, but then it is the fourth generation that we're really promised the blessings it's like okay things are going to be up you know kind of bad for one two maybe even three generations before we start to see these children you know some of us we're talking about our great grandchildren um that we will actually see the fruit of the laborers like you know the tribulation is going to be the fertilizer spread all over the earth and then you know it takes a while for the stuff to actually start to grow and you know but you know on down the road we're actually going to see this I hope I didn't confuse everybody I know I did somebody anyway 43 today I have inspired you to save the woman who has stumbled on her path and when you present her to me whom you have saved I will give her a flower a blessing, a very great peace that she will not fall again. He's talking to the men here, you know, in this woman's section. Um, in the man's section, he he basically blames the regeneration or the degeneration of the woman on the man. He said it was because of her, because of us, that she is in a state. It says if you find this woman and she, you know, is, is not living up to, you know, what you think she should be doing, blame yourself. You know, it's because if you had been doing right and you had been following the father and you doing what, you know, you were supposed to be doing, Adam, if you had been doing what you were supposed to be doing, then Eve wouldn't have been over there, you know, in the first place kind of thing. It, it, it says that plainly in, you know, in the other sections of this chapter, I believe. But we're going to go on. Let's look at verse 43 real close. He says, today I have inspired you, talking to the men, to save the woman who has stumbled on her path. Now we just talked about a few minutes ago how we are we are held responsible for this for her stumbling. It is because of us that we have that she has stumbled in the first place. It's because of the man, it's because of the daddies, because of the granddaddies, because of the brothers, that that she has stumbled in the first place. If we men had it been better, she wouldn't have failed. He says, um, 
So I've inspired you. And when you present her to me to whom you have saved, I will give her a flower. Okay. This. It, 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 so. And this is. I know it's kind of a size kind of talking to the men. But what he's saying is. Once we've helped this woman to regenerate herself to to or, or the, the reconstruction or, you know, the rebuilding of 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 what seems to be talking about an individual woman, you know, he says, I will give her a flower, you know, a blessing and a very great peace so that she will not fall again. And, you know, I believe I guess this touches me so much because I believe I've actually seen this happen, even though I really can't put it in words that you can see. But I think I've I've seen this in my wife. I think I, I think I actually witnessed her get her flower as the result of. You know what we're saying here, um, a blessing and a very great peace, you know, all came, you know, at one 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 time there, you know, and uh, that she will not fall again. Not so much for anything that I've done and not so much that for anything that she can take credit for either. But from what I've seen of the father moving in her life, some of the things I've saw um, him do that, you know, I say that. But I'm going to go on to 44. He says, if you fulfill this mission in this way, those beings wounded by the world will feel the love of Jesus enter their hearts. Again, talking to the men, if you if you would take on this mission, you know, and I guess this is why I always take it personal. Anytime he says, if you'll take on this mission or take on that mission, you know, I'm one of the first ones to jump up and say, hey, you know, send me. Let's look at 45. He says, I will listen when in their prayers they'll tell me, my father, do not see my sin. See only my pain. Do not judge my ingratitude but see my suffering in that instant my comfort will descend to that troubled heart and it will be purified by its tears okay women okay women now it's time for you to step up this is right here is talking to you when he says i i shall listen and when i hear their prayers tell me so from what i understand this is like is this is like telling you what to pray now, I don't believe that you can, you know, just write this down on a little, you know, index card, hold it up and pray and it's going to do some type of, you know, magic in your life. But I do believe if you internalize what he's saying here and you get a full understanding of what's meant by, you know, what's in quotation marks here and you pray this prayer, you know, you, you're going to receive the blessings that he talks about right there. What does he say? My father, do not see my sin. See only my pain. Do not judge my ingratitude, but see my suffering. In that instant, my comfort will descend to that troubled heart, right? So, if you, so what I believe is that is telling us here is that if you say spirit to spirit communication using all of the proper prayer techniques that you can learn, you know, in classes that we give, you know, on our channel, you can learn from the third testament or you can learn from the Lord's prayer on how to actually say and an effective prayer talking about our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and such. If you can do that with this particular, with these particular words here, he says in that instant, my comfort will descend to that troubled heart. And it will be purified by its tears. Try it. Try it. I say try it. I say do it. And then, you know, give us some feedback. Give a comment, you know, if something moves in your life. Because, you know, from what I understand, that's, that's, that's a lot there. When he says, my comfort will descend to that troubled heart. Man, do you know what his comfort feels like? Yeah, give us some feedback. Give us a testimony. Let's go on. Oh, if you only knew how much more the prayer of the sinner is felt than that of the vain who believe themselves just and clean. All right. Now, it's, 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 it's basically pointing us or to a humble place. You know, when you understand that, what does he say there? You, you have had a bit of ingratitude towards the blessings that he's bestowed upon you. But I'm all right. Let's get on. Charlie. 46 of the love of the love with which i have given you life men give little sign of evidence of all human emotions that which comes closest to the divine love is maternal love for in it is disinterest abnegation and the ordeal of speaking the happiness of the child even at the cost of sacrifice okay so it's talking about motherly love here 
and comparing motherly love to divine love here you know let me look up some of these words um disinterest indifference unconcern apathy disregard uh heedlessness uh listlessness um or lack of concern <clears throat> He says, uh, comes closest to divine love is maternal love, for in it is disinterest. Let's look up this other word. Maybe it'll make more sense. It don't really right now, but let's see. Rejection, renunciation, repudiation, disavowal, denial, abstention, refrainment, avoidance. Okay, wow. I'm having trouble with this one. Of all human emotions... That which comes closest to divine love is maternal love. For in it is disinterest, abnegation, and the ideal of seeking happiness of the child even at the cost of sacrifice. Okay, so I guess what it's saying there is that with a lot of um, stuff that will may make the rest of us feel uncomfortable the love is still there and that's close to divine love that's a tough one hey y'all help me out in the comments if you can better explain it than i put it in the comments i'm gonna go on to voice 37 he says and to sterile women the master says long have you desired and asked that your womb be converted into fountains of life you have hoped that when the evening or the morning approaches a tender heart would be heard beating within you but the days and nights have passed and you have only shared tears because the child has not arrived at your doorstep now this is a hard right turn or hard left turn we just took here we went from talking about mothers to now we're talking about sterile women by you know i don't know what title i gave this video or you know you know what kind of image i put up but how many sterile women would actually be watching this video you know, but he, he's he's directly he's he's definitely pointing to them. This, this is to all of the mothers. You know, I know you've been in, you know, some places where you've seen people who were not mothers actually, you know, get involved in the mother stay ceremonies like they they get their flower, too. You know, and it is maybe it's because, you know, they really want children desperately and they want to be or I should say they really want to be mothers desperately and you know they f you know feel a certain kind of way because they've never been given the opportunity well stay tuned let's look at 48 he says how many of you who are listening to me and have been deprived of hope by science will have to bear fruit to believe in my power thus through that miracle many may recognize me watch and wait do not forget my words. It's talking to those of us who are trying to have babies or have been trying for years to have babies without success. Look what he said. How many of you, you know, who's the pride of your science? You're going down to the science and, you know, to the doctors and they can't really help you, you know, to have a baby, you know, and, you know, or, you know, or maybe, you know, you can't afford it or or maybe the problem is not you it's your husband and you really can't get a, get around, you know, kind of something weird. You know, he says, how many of you will have to bear fruit to believe in my power? Thus, through that miracle, many may recognize me. Watch and wait. So there's something coming that's for you. There's something coming, guys. You ladies who are not able to have children now will be living miracles of his power and have children now i'm gonna get off script for a second i don't care who don't like it i'm gonna get some comments behind it and so be it but what i believe is that the one of the reasons maybe even the main reason if you're reading this i'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say all, all your stars are lining up to point to the main reason why you are sterile in the first place or can't have a child in the first place i, I just wish i had a better word is because of the tribulation he doesn't want you to have a baby during this time this tribulous time when things are um really going to get bad for all of humanity now's not the time for you to be um you know carrying behind little toddlers or a mess of little toddlers you know behind you you know he kind of needs you to be a little swifter than that and be able to you know bob and weave without having to worry about you know some crumb muncher behind you um so hold on watch and wait after the tribulation, y'all gonna be having some babies.
All right, now the that's the end of that section. So we get down into the next section is education of children and adolescents. But we're going to jump up here to chapter 20. What section? Let me look over here and see what section we're going to in chapter 20. Uh, section 4, the example of Mary for women. All right, now that brings us to uh, verse 27 of chapter 20. It says, The life of your master is an example for all of humanity, and yet all women needed teaching about their mission as mothers. Mary was sent to humanity in representation of the divine tenderness to give them her divine example of humility as well. All right. Now, here we're making a connection between our mothers and Mary. Now, I do want to show you guys something um, right quick. Let's see. I think I already have it pulled up. If you go to Google and put in the lost books of the Bible in Google and search for um, a website called sacredtext.com. What you will find is the lost books of the Bible, a free version, free text of the lost books of the Bible. You can click on each one of these books. Now, there's one in here called the Gospel of the Birth of Mary, and you can look in that gospel and see a story of Mary, who she was, where she came from, what was her life like. It's all about Mary. What's it called again? The Gospel of of the birth of Mary and you're looking at the introduction part here I, I haven't read that I don't read that part usually because you know I usually don't have time but you know you may find it of interest so I'll put it there but it actually if you look down in there it gives you the whole book all of the details you want to know about Mary in this whole book I mean, I can keep clicking down for you. You can push the pause button and read the whole thing. Looks like. I guess I'll go ahead and finish and do that. But. <clears throat> it tells about. Why she was chosen. You know. Even her, her parents were. There was a lot to do with them. They they weren't just random Joes. You know. You know. They. It, they was. You know. I think her daddy was the high priest at one time and, and that kind of thing. All right. That's that old that. But let's get back over here. All right. <clears throat> Mary. Mary was the example. So let's look at 28. He says, Blessed women, you two form part of my apostolate. Between the spirits of men and your own, there is no difference. Although you are physically different and have different missions. All right, cool. So we have a similar spirit, right? We're, we're physically different and have different missions. Um, our spirits are the same. You know, we find out in the third era that our wives become our sisters kind of deal. We find that in Hermes. Uh, the Shepherd of Hermas, which is also part of the Lost Books of the Bible or the Forgotten Books of Eden, finding in that same same place there. Look at 29. He says, take Jesus as master of your spirit and follow him in the path traced by his love. Make his word yours and embrace his cross. All right. So then it goes on to say, I am speaking to you with the same word with which I speak to men for spiritually you are the same. But when your women's heart seeks a model to imitate, when you need perfect examples to support you in perfecting yourself in life, remember Mary. Observe her throughout her life's journey on earth. All right. So he's telling you, you got to go read this other book over here. You you can't do so unless you do. What are you going to do? Just make it up or let somebody else make it up for you? And the King James Version, you know, as much as we love it, does not talk much about Mary. But here it is, a whole book on Mary. A whole book on Mary. You know? And so you can get an understanding of what he's talking about. You know? You know, how, you know, when she 
became uh, physically mature, so to speak, they actually kicked her out of the, out of the temple. She had lived in the temple since she was a baby. Her feet never touched dirt, you know, and you know, and she it's because they carried her as a baby and put her in a temple, and she lived in a temple. You know, it wasn't that she was you know allergic to dirt. It's just that she she lived somewhere else. She lived indoors. And but the thing is, when she became 12 years old and it started raining, so to speak, um, they said, hey, she's going to file a temple and they kicked her out. You know, so so she so example is all I'm saying is it's an example. All right, let's get back to it. So we can get this thing wrapped up here. He says, it was the will of the Father that the humble life of Mary be recorded by my disciples who knew her through works and who spoke with her. Okay, so again, it's pointing to that, it's pointing to that book we just looked at over there. What did it say? It said it was written by, um, and I didn't mean for this to turn into a book promotion, but it actually, you know, well, I guess the text meant for it to be. Um, what did it say? It's attributed to Matthew, you know. That's the disciples, so he allowed Matthew to write this down just so we can have, just so us women can have the example to go by. All right. Um, that life, humble to those familiar with it, was luminous from the time of her birth until her end on earth. Mary wrote many pages of loving teachings with her humility of spirit, her infinite tilderness, as with the purity of heart and love for humanity, which she expressed with silence more often than with words. For she knew it was Christ who had come to talk to men. Okay, talking about the humility of Mary. I guess it is turning into a book promotion, you know, of that book. Because you find out that she was a very humble lady. You know, she even knew that she was going to give birth to, to, to God. She knew she was going to give birth to the to Yehoshua HaMashiach. She knew that. Even as a child, she was walking around, but yet she was humble, you know. Um, 33 says, The spirit of Mary was the same tenderness that emanates from the Father in order to give humanity the perfect example of humility, obedience, and meekness. Her passage through the world was a beam of light. Her life was simple, elevated, and pure. In her, the prophecies that announced that the Messiah would be born of a virgin were fulfilled. All right? It's talking about Mary. All right? Um, and it's talking about mothers, too. It's giving Mary as the, the, um, the example. Don't lose interest. You know, I hope, you stay, I hope I'm making, making this make sense. Um, I feel a little bit uncomfortable for some odd reason, you know. But um, I'm hoping it's making sense. We're making a tie between our mamas and our mother. We're making a tie between women and this example Mary here. So let's go on. Let's finish it. Only she could have carried in her womb the seed of God. Only she was worthy to remain after her mission before Jesus was completed as the spiritual mother of humanity. The spiritual mother of humanity. That, that, that's what we're doing. Spiritual mother of humanity. This is our mother. Mary, this is our mother that we're talking about. All right, let's look at 35. For that reason, women, Mary is your perfect model. But seek her and imitate her in her silence and in her acts of humility and infinite self-denial. Out of love for the needy. In her silent pains, in the tenderness that pardons all, and in the love that is intercession consolation and sweet companionship yeah you know and and there's a lot of people that's going to get turned off by this because they're like hey don't the catholic people worship mary um they're, they're i will argue that they're not really worshiping the same mary i will argue that what they're what they're worshiping is a figure similar to the one they worship with that uh, body on that cross still it's imaginary it's a false god it's a pagan god it's a it's a you know it's you know a picture on a wall that they're worshiping is what i argue but this is talking about how mother how mary is closest to our mother nature 
you know, which is all things that the Father has created. And, you know, to to worship the real and true Mary, the one we're learning about, you know, or going to learn about, I'm, I'm just going to get really deep here in a second. It's going to talk about, you know, how is to love everything that the Father has created. She is not only our um or the mother of humanity but she is the mother of everything we're going to find out so let's 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 stay with it for a minute all right let's go to 36 young women wives mothers orphans or widows lonely women whose hearts are pierced by pain name mary as your sweet and affectionate mother call her with your thoughts receive her in your spirit and feel her in your heart are you paying attention he's talking to you you know, uh, young women, wives, mothers, orphans, widows, you know, all, all, everybody, all women. He said, he said, he's saying, look, it's Mary as your mother, you know, he, and she's not to replace your mama. It's just different. You have a mama and we have a mother, you know, and our mother is the same. You know, I've repeated because, you know, I wanted to sign a sink in, you know, um, well, this is Mother's Day. Well, let's celebrate Mother's Day. Who is our mother? All right, one more verse. We're going to wrap this up. Now, we want to jump all the way up here to chapter 62. Now, this is one verse out of chapter 62 that kind of jumped out at me, and I think it should be included in this video. And so let's look at it. Verse 42 says, Beloved disciples, be zealous of my work. Comply with my mandates, and with those you shall be given testimony of me. Mary, your loving mother also descends to you and fills you with grace she teaches you a perfect law and changes your heart into a fountain of charity so that you may perform great deeds of love among you truth she is my co-collaborator and next to my word of a master and judge is her word of mother and intermediary love her my disciple and invoke her name Verily I say to you that Mary is watchful over you and accompanies you not only in the days of trials but eternally. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for, for me over here at Hermes Academy. Um, I did have one more treat for y'all. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.